Before I went to seminary, I attended college at Lawrence University in Appleton for three years. And it's a wonderful school, very good teachers, and I learned a lot when I was there. However, those were three of the most difficult years of my life. When I was there, I was unsure of my future. I didn't know whether I was called to be a priest or not. I was running from it as fast as I could, and God always runs faster. And I wasn't doing well academically. I was struggling in my classes. I, I wanted to get into different activities, and I, I failed. It was heartbreaking. It was difficult. I had a wonderful roommate, and his mother always would bring us food, and I'm friends with them still. But I struggled in so many other ways, and even when I was dating, I was thinking about priesthood in the back of my mind, and uh, it always seemed to end in sadness. So the three years that I spent in college before I went to seminary were like being a beached whale, and I was thrashing about, and it was difficult. And I remember that when I decided to leave and go to seminary to study to be a priest, and I was so excited about that, that as I packed up my things 16 years ago this month and drove away halfway through the semester, as I looked at college in the rearview mirror, I sighed, I remember, and I thought to myself, I just wasted three years of my life, which I'll never get back. That's what I was thinking 16 years ago. But I was wrong. Today in our gospel, we hear about the transfiguration. Every second Sunday of Lent, every year, we hear about this mysterious, mystical experience that Peter, James, and John had with our Lord. Jesus takes the leaders of the apostles, the leaders of the early church, Peter, James, and John, he takes them up a high mountain. And when he's there with them, he reveals his divinity. Whereas before, his humanity shone forth. On top of this mountain, they see definitively that he's God. It must have been quite an experience. And Peter, who is always the first one to speak, and sometimes he puts his foot in his mouth. We never do that, you know. Peter says, Lord, it's wonderful that we're here. This is great. I tell you what, we'll build three tents, one for you, one for Moses, one for Elijah. James, John, and I will sleep outside. That's great. And let's just stay here in the moment. This is awesome. This is wonderful. And no sooner does Peter say that than the cloud lifts and they see the Lord in his humanity. And Jesus probably says to them, okay, fellows, it's time now to go back down the mountain. And James probably looked at Peter, and Peter looked at John, and the three of them looked at each other, and they were perhaps thinking, what just happened here? What did we just see? Why did we see it? What's the point? We saw his divinity, and now that's past, and we're going back down this mountain. What's the point of all of this anyway? They would soon find out the reason. Because when they went down that mountain, shortly thereafter came the cross. The crucifixion, the death, the empty tomb, and the resurrection. And so Jesus, who loved them so much, Peter, who was to be the first pope, James and John, major leaders in the early church, he wanted these three to see something for a reason. He wanted them to be strengthened in their faith so that when the winds would blow and challenges would come in the early church, or when they came face to face with the crucifixion, their faith would not waver. Their faith would be strong. 
So when they were challenged, they would say, Ah, remember the mountain. Remember when we went up the mountaintop and we saw that he was God. So Jesus gave them this gift, the transfiguration, for a reason, to prepare them for what was to come. The Lord gave them this gift. And the Lord gives us gifts too, to prepare us for what is to come. You know, there's this phrase that I think we probably all said before at one time or another, and it's very, very pious. It's also a little trite. Everything happens for a reason. Everything happens for a reason. Very pious, a little trite, and also true. True. Everything does happen for a reason. For those of us who have the faith, for those of us who are believers, you know and I know that as we reflect on our lives, we look back, even though perhaps we didn't understand it at the moment, we understand now that everything has happened to us for a reason. And we can see the hand of God in all of this. Sometimes, you and I are brought up the mountain. In other words, by that I mean good times, happy times, wonderful things, uh, birth of a child, a new job, a success at our work, new friends, we win the lottery, things are going well. And sometimes when things are so great, you and I can forget that these are God's blessings. We can think we've done it all ourselves. Me, my, I did it. And we can forget that God has given us these happy times, these good things, these blessings for a reason. It's not random. God is giving us graces, and he has, and he will, for a very important reason. We may not understand it at the moment, why things are going so great, but it's for a reason. Sometimes, God takes us back down the mountain, and things are not going very well, and suffering comes. There's a great deal of suffering here this morning in this church, in your life and in mine. Many of us are going down this mountainside and it's a difficulty and it's a hurt. And sometimes when we are struggling and the cross is heavy, we can forget that God is present, just as present as when we're going up the mountain. We can forget that the Lord is carrying us and that he loves us we can become so trapped in our suffering or our difficulties that we forget that God loves us. Whether we have a serious health diagnosis or we lose our job or marriage is on the rocks or we fall back into our addiction, whatever it is, sometimes we can forget that God is with us and that he's loving us even as we have to go down the mountain and that the hard things that happen in life and you know what they are, those two happen for a reason. It's harder to see. It's difficult to understand. Sometimes we don't understand, and it hurts. Sometimes we will have to wait to the end of our life when we see the Lord face to face, and we ask him, why? I don't know about you, I have a long list already of things I'm going to ask him when I go to my judgment. Why did this happen? Why did this happen? Why did this happen? I still don't understand. But our faith tells us that things happen for a reason. The, the, the theological word for this is providence. Providence, God's loving care. He guides us along the way of life. He's our loving Father. He cares for us. This is what our faith is all about. So whether we're going up the mountain or down, everything happens for a reason. 
We may not understand it, but someday we will. Or put another way, imagine a large block of marble and there's a sculptor and the sculptor wants to create a work of art. Well, the sculptor can't just wish it to be or will it to be. What does the sculptor have to do? Take a hammer, take a chisel and start beating on this block of marble, chiseling it, sculpting it, hammer, sand, paper. And if that block of marble could have feelings and would suddenly start to speak, the marble would say, probably, leave me alone. I was happy the way I was. You're hurting me. Ouch. Don't hit me. Don't shape me. Leave me as I am. Leave me alone. But all the while, the sculptor shapes it, chisels at it, sands it, and creates something very beautiful, a work of art. My brothers and sisters, don't you see that the good Lord is doing this in our life, your life and mine, right now, this very day? And he's shaping and chiseling away and sanding off the rough edges. And sometimes he has to take out a hammer. Sometimes he has to use dynamite. As you and I, we have thick skulls. And he has to shape us. At the time, we don't get it. We don't like it. It hurts. But the Lord is making a work of art in your life and in mine. And this is our faith. Everything does happen for a reason. For those of us who do believe, we accept this, even though it's not always easy. We don't always understand why. When I drove away from college 16 years ago this month, I thought that I had wasted three years of my life I thought, I'll never come back to northeastern Wisconsin again. Now as I look back, even though those were three of the most difficult years, they were three of the most important years. And I have never experienced such spiritual depths as those three years. Walking to St. Mary's Parish in Appleton, walking late at night and talking out loud to God, saying, what do you want me to do with my life? Yes, it was hard, but I long for the intimacy with God that I had at that grace time. And the reason that I am honored to be in front of you this morning is because of the hardship of those three years that brought me here this day. At the time, I didn't get it. I hated it take it away. Now, I can understand that it was the best thing that could have ever happened to me. And I would be willing to bet that each one of you here has a similar story in your own life. Everything happens for a reason. Those of us who do believe, who have the faith, we know that the Lord Jesus holds us and carry us along the way. When we are going up the mountain, and when we are going back down the mountain, whether we are going up or down, there's a reason. And we ask the Lord Jesus to help us to accept this, to trust him, and we ask our dear Lord to carry us, to guide us, to love us along the way of life. May God bless you.